How are we doing here? Oh, look at that. Look at that. Is that new? I bought it when you were gone, and I wanted to say that you weren't Yeah, that was the time when me and Lauren went shopping, and she like tried to justify herself for buying it the whole time. <laughs> Carrie bought one now. Are you okay? Holy crap, dude. Shirt a little small? His shirt's a little small. Why are you wearing a shirt? It's, it's working. It's definitely working. You're accomplishing Wait, the goal. Wait, did you say why are you wearing our shirt? No, why is he wearing his shirt? Oh, oh. Okay, good morning. Hello. Good morning. Let's bring it in. Yeah, we, uh, we ch didn't change things up here. I can explain this to you in a minute. Find a seat anywhere. I know it's kind of new and different. I actually was surprised when I walked in here myself because I forgot. I would love for you guys to take the seats in the middle here, the table seats. How many people remember who and when it was all tables? Yeah, I like that. So this uh, Thursday and Friday, we had pastors and leaders in from around the country. And uh, Harold and Linda Everly snuck in and snuck out on us. And did a evening and all day Friday theology roundtable. And that's why these tables were here, because we wanted um, interactive teaching and discussion that took place. It was a really good time. Most of the leaders headed back to their churches and homes. We have one of our friends still here from Colorado Springs. Larry McKnight is still here. He's going to share his heart with us a little bit today. Looking forward to that. So you guys okay with change? No? Gary, you're going to have to get used to it, man. Every, someone needs to hug Gary. Come here. Come here. Come on. It's a bunch of people. Get over here. Jonah, hug Gary. He needs some hugging. He needs some hugging. Yeah. He loves this and hates this all at the same time. Yeah, you do. That's good. That's good. He's got to remember he's loved. Yeah, the chairs still work exactly the same way. So what's it feel like to actually look at people here in the middle while you're in church? See, this is the part I really like. You're supposed to bring it. Someone just asked me, where's the food? What's supposed to happen in church about food? Who's supposed to bring it? That's right. I sh you're in the wrong church, Jared. If you want me to bring the food. So Father, I do ask that we see one another today. It's one of the reasons why we're sitting like this. That we would see you in each other. Lord, I thank you that there isn't just one way to worship. Isn't just one way to experience you. There's multiple ways of encounter with you. And one of the easiest ways is in the flesh and blood that's right next to us. So, Father, it's our prayer today, Lord God, that you would show up in multiple ways and in multiple forms that we could see you as you are. Thank you, Lord.
settle our hearts into you. Take a moment, and I know for many of us, our hearts and minds are still like kind of all over the place, but something David mastered in his lifetime was meditating upon the Lord. And I'm not sure if it's something that we do very often. So take a moment here in the quiet and just think on Him. Let the thoughts and intentions of your heart be directed toward the Lord. And just think on him. Thoughtfully consider Jesus. If you have to, and if it helps your imagination, picture him. Let your imagination draw a picture of who he is, what he looks like. You were never meant to worship blindly. You were meant to worship something you can see, someone you could embrace and encounter and experience. Come on, discipline your own heart to think upon the Lord. Let His goodness begin to rise up on the inside of you. Let His love permeate the places He has not been in a while inside of you. God, in this moment, touch every part of who we are. Let nothing be isolated from your spirit. Excluded from your life. Let it all experience you. There it is. Oh, I'm feeling the collective turn of the heart. I'm not sure if anybody else is, but as it happens, it becomes easier for everyone else to do it. There's a collective turn. There's a collective settling into the Lord that causes it to be easier for all of us. You are good. You are good. As you're ready, stand to your feet with me. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Just lift up your hands. I don't tell you what to do very often in worship, but if you can with me, just lift up your hands. Not because the music's making you feel like you should, but because it's a sign of His worthiness. He's worthy. Jesus is worthy in this place. This is the one our soul loves. This is the one when our heart turns, our body and soul agree and come into harmony and alignment. This is the one that causes peace in the depths of who we are. This is the one who sticks closer than a brother. Jesus, 
Jesus. Strength of our hearts. Well, I, I just want to, I feel like we should be talking to him about the things that he is to us, the person that he is to us. If you could open your mouth and just say, he's the healer of my soul. He's the provider of all I need. Come on, begin to tell him who he is. You are all I've ever needed. Your water in my desert. Rivers of life. You are the glory of my life. You are my righteousness. You are the lover of my soul. Come on, don't wait for someone else to tell you what to sing. There's something cheap about that worship. There's something cheap about singing someone else's praise. There's something holy, something expensive about it coming from the inside of us. Something of a cost, a sacrifice of praise. Let it rise from mature sons and daughters that know what it costs. You're worthy, Lord. You're worthy, God. You're my Father. never fails will not fail me now you won't fail me now and in the waiting the same God who's never late is working all things out is working all things come on let's lift our voices together oh yes I will lift you high in the lowest valley yes I will Bless your name, oh yes, I will sing for joy when my heart is heavy all my days, oh yes, I will.
second I just want to keep it down and I I might just be doing this for myself but 
usually it's not that way. Um, I just I want to sing that bridge uh, without the music being loud and just really internalize that I choose to praise. He doesn't force me to praise. I choose to praise. No matter what my highs or my lows, I choose to praise. Jesus. Yeah, I choose to praise. To glorify, glorify the name of all names. That nothing can stand against. And I choose to praise. To glorify, glorify. Cause I choose to praise To glorify, glorify the name of all names That nothing can stand against And I choose to praise To glorify, glorify the name of all names they can't stand against
Stand against I choose to pray to glorify, to glorify the name of all names, and nothing can stand against. Oh, heart, believe, let faith rise up in me. Let faith rise up, O oh heart, believe. Let faith rise up in me. Let faith rise up, O oh heart, believe. Let faith rise up in me. Let faith rise up. Oh heart, believe, let faith rise up in me. I want to look like Jesus. Let faith rise up, oh heart, believe, let faith rise up in me. Let faith rise up, oh heart, believe, let faith. So some of you know me, some of you don't. Some of you know. <sighs> Married 20 years. Struggled with infertility for the last 16. I cannot begin to tell you how many prophetic words we have of having a child. And this week, I got to week <laughs> day 19 of being late <laughs> and thinking, okay, finally. We're going to have a kid. And then I about passed out and got sick in a minute with my boss and the miscarriage started. So yet again, not pregnant and standing there going, okay, God, I don't even know how to praise you right now. I don't even know that I can praise you. I don't know that I know how to praise. I don't know that I actually even hear your voice. I don't know how to stand in this. I order, I took a leap of faith and said, okay, God, I'm going to order a shirt to give my husband. It says, pray for, <laughs> like, be nice to me. My wife's pregnant and give that to him when he returns from hunting in Kansas on Thursday to say this, we're finally pregnant. And I wanted to cancel the order. And two friends of mine, my sister-in-law and her friend said, do you stand on the promise? If 
even when you don't see it. Even when the test results, even when it's not there, do you stand and do you still believe me? Do you still have faith in me? And to stand there and say, okay, I don't get it. I don't see it. But I'm just going to stand. And I walk in here. And there's like, I think all y'all look at each other and get pregnant. I'm just saying. And to just look around the room and then to hear this song. And I couldn't even sing because the tears would start. And to say, I believe, I have faith in the midst of what doesn't make sense, in the midst of seeing it with my natural eyes. Everything that says God is a liar. And to stand there and say, I still believe. I'm still going to hold on. I'm like, okay, apparently we need to develop more faith. And the father said, I need you to share your story. I need you to stand up there and tell them. It doesn't matter what it looks like. It doesn't matter what the test result is. It doesn't matter what the fight is for you. It's about saying, God, I still believe you, and you're still a good, good father. And I'm still going to stand in your arms. So stretch out your hands toward her right now. Faith is substance. That's what the Bible says. And if it's substance, we can give substance. Yeah, get in there. So we release substance of our faith to Janice, to Rob, to her family. And honestly, I feel like there's other people in this room that could use this. So if you need the substance of faith today, it is in the atmosphere. We stretch out our faith towards you. This is the love of the Father towards you, Janice. Be filled with this faith. The faith of Jesus that's been freely shared with us, we share with you. And thank you for instilling faith in us. I want you to know that the fact that you took this microphone and stood here was the evidence of things not seen. So we bless you today. And we stand with you in your faith. And for anyone else in this room, you are not alone in this. Take the substance of faith that's ample in the atmosphere and take it for yourself. That's what church is. It's the place where those who have need can take from those who have plenty. Why else would we gather? Those who need should never leave empty. So we bless you today. Lord. Thank you, Lord. It's not what I have. It's not what you give me. It's who you are. And you are good. It's not what I have. It's not what you give me. you give me it's who you
never gonna let, never gonna let me down. You're never gonna let, never gonna let me down.
Thank you for your joy and gladness. Thank you that you are good. Thank you that you are good. Thank you that you are good. Yeah. Yeah. And 
and there is a releasing of happiness and joy for today. So if you want that, please come get it. And if you can't come up and get it, then ask someone to come out and give it to you. But don't waste an opportunity like this because he is good and he wants to pour out his goodness and his gladness and his joy and his happiness and fill your spirit in empty places with it. And I just beg you to receive it. I want to receive it. So, Lord, I receive your joy. I ask for your joy. I ask for your happiness to fill me, Lord, because I know how good you are, how good of a father you are, Lord. Father, we love you. Your children love you. Emmanuel, we love you. Thank you for being with us and not leaving us and not forsaking us, Lord. Thank you that you did all this for us. And we want Holy Spirit to just fill us with your goodness. Fill this place with your goodness, Lord. Fill our bodies and our spirits and our souls with your goodness overflowing, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus, that you don't run out of joy and gladness, Lord. Thank you that, that if we're not at joy and gladness, then that's not the end for us. Because we are to be filled, overflowing with joy and gladness, Lord. Thank you that you overcome any situation for us, Lord. Lord, we just receive it. We receive it. We ask for more. We ask for more, Lord. So I just pray for gladness over everybody. Everybody who desires it. Everybody that seeks it. Pray for those who don't feel like they can even reach out to ask for it. Lord, that you would supernaturally put your happiness in them right now, Lord. Not just people in here, people in here, but people in our town, in our community, in our country, Lord, to feel desperate and despair. The Lord, Holy Spirit, you would just overcome them with your gladness and your goodness. Lord, because you are good. You are good, Lord.
there's a desire in the heart of the Father that longs for all of his children to be together not just physically in a place but together in heart in purpose in love for one another there is a joy every parent in this room knows the joy of when the kids are getting along when the kids are together in one accord there's something beautiful that brings exuberant joy to the heart of the father and as Chuck was talking about the joy of the Lord is available to us I thought of the phrase the joy of the Lord and something on the inside of me wants to bring joy to the Lord today because his joy is our strength when he is joyful when he is rejoicing when he is pleased and happy there's strength that's released into us his children so I'm going to ask you all if I know it's it's been an hour and 15 minutes I'm keeping track in case you didn't think I am if we could stand together those of you that have taken a break and have already sat there you go Let's stand together. Let's join together. Let's bring joy to the heart of the Father that results in strength being released powerfully among us. Raise your hand if you could use some strength of the Spirit of God in you. So let's be one today. Let's join our hearts together in a single song of praise to God. Bring joy to your heart. Let us bring joy to the Father's heart as your sons and daughters. Hallelujah! Hallelujah! Hallelujah!
with your praise. Here we go. Oh, and all the earth will shout your praise. Our hearts will cry. These books will say, Great are you, Lord. Yes. Oh, and all the earth will shout your praise. Let it not just be a song. Let it be a prophetic declaration. This place is called World Harvest Outreach. Let the whole earth be reached with this song. With this sound of the Lord. May this moment be a doorway of heaven into earth. Let it rush in. Let the heavenly dimension rush into the earth. Let Jesus' prayer that the kingdoms of this world will become the kingdoms of our God. That your will would be done on earth as it is in heaven. Let your kingdom come. These are not just verses in a book. These aren't just songs on a screen. This is a present reality and we will walk in it. Let our lives be a prophetic declaration of we just sang. 
Let our lives be the praise that fills the whole earth. You are worthy of it, Jesus. May you receive what you died for, which is all, all, all. It's all yours. You're worthy of it all. Let nothing be held back from you. You held nothing back from us. That's why we praise with all we have. As um, we were just in that last moment where we were releasing joy back to the Lord, I felt his, I felt his chuckle. I felt his laugh. And he was there just like, just laughing with us, not at us, but with us. And I heard him in his laughter kind of go something like this. <laughs> they think this is just a local church. <laughs> they think this is just a local church. They think they came to local church this morning. But he showed me a picture of what's happening outside the building this morning as we were in here. And there were angels all around the building. And they were worker angels, builder angels. And I saw the roads that are already here, but they weren't building a building, they were building roads. <sighs> they were building, and then he said they were in roads. They were out there building more and more in roads. And then I asked him, is there anything significant about these roads? And he said, the roads that are here right now have been mainly just a one-way street, people coming in. But the roads he's building now, he wants them to be two-way street, bringing things in and taking things out, bringing things in and taking things out. And then I pulled back a little more and I saw the roads and I saw that they were you guys. The names of these streets were the names of some of the families in this church. And then he laughed. He says he thinks they're only building local church. And then he pulled back a little more and I saw this is gonna sound weird, but I saw this whole region and it was on the back of a giant angel. Almost like a transformer. <laughs> and he kind of had you guys on his back and while y'all were here and praising and building, he was taking giant steps across the earth. And he just wants you guys to know that what you're doing here is so important and what you're doing here is not just bringing your family to local church but it's building something it's building something very important that he is carrying across the nations so as you're here and you're feeling you're doing life and you're feeling insignificant just remember that it's building the road it's building the inroads and it's not just the one-way street, it's the two-way street. That this church is not just here, it's going out because of your lives. So I just want to personally thank you guys as well because you guys touched me and my family all the way in Florida. But I wanted you to know, you got to think bigger. So this is a warehouse. And in this region, supply chain industry is like the big industry here. So supply chain is about the warehouse where things are storage. It's about the manufacturing, where we just manufactured joy today, right? So it's about manufacturing goods, and then it's about storing them. It's about having a warehouse. 
this is a warehouse of worship where we store things and then as she just said there's highways for things to go and things to come back for a changing of goods the other part other parts is distribution that there's distribution centers some of you even work in them there's transportation there's logistics there's all these different pieces and everybody here has a different responsibility in the supply chain of God's kingdom where we're all called to take what's here what's being stored here what's been manufactured here out into the world and then we're called to bring other things back here because Mark said last week it's about bringing and welcoming others that are broken and in need here that we need to bring them in so that we can help them get repaired help them understand that they belong that they're accepted that they are chosen by us and by God and get them restored to the point that they're functional and beyond functional and that they're back to their core identity of who they are in Christ and that they're walking in the way he designed them because when you manufacture a part when you manufacture an item it has a purpose so when he manufactured each of us we had a purpose in his original destiny for us and our job is to help people find their purpose so that they can go fulfill their s destinies and storm the gates of hell we'll have the ushers come Father, thank you that this sound does not stay locally. And I pray, Lord God, the same thing for the finances that come in today. That they not stay locally, but they go and accomplish what you sent them to do. These funds, these finances that are coming in, they will be sowed in good ground. And they will go and accomplish the purpose for which you sent it. I bless every giver and every gift for kingdom advancement. For the love of the Father to be known in the earth through it. In Jesus' name. Everybody bring it. How's everybody today? So, uh, during worship, I just got a vision uh, <clears throat> of a guy, he just planting his flag on top of a mountain. And my first thought was, well, what color is the flag? <laughs> the Lord says, doesn't matter, just plant your flag. And then, you know, of course, your mind thinks, well, what if I'm not on a mountaintop? He said, you can be in a muddy mess, just plant your flag. And every song we had today was praising where you're at, worship where you're at. And it just really impacted me today. 
I know there might be somebody here that might not feel like you're on a high spot, mountaintop. Just plant your flag, stand where you're at. Yeah, as he was saying that, I felt like if we know Emmanuel is with us, that wherever we plant our flag, I don't care where you are in the midst of it, that planting the flag says, I will stand. There is always solid ground if the Lord is there. Okay? So I feel like there's, there's that declaration that where you are, worship. Where you are, praise. Where you are, believe. Have faith. And solid ground will start being established right in that place. Hey, good morning, family. How you doing? Um, well, so this is just a quick announcement for the youth. So as you saw last night, I posted, we'll be going ice skating today, uh, 2.30. It's going to be at the Hagerstown ring. And um, the cost is about $10 if you rent the uh, skates and all that. So it'll be really nice to see you there. And actually, it is kind of open to everybody. So just come and join us. It's going to be really fun. If you don't know how to do it, don't worry. We'll be there to laugh with and at you. So <laughs> we will help you to get up after we laugh for a little bit. And we will help you to learn. We will do it. Um, the next one is, as you can see on the screen right now, December the 16th, we will have the Christmas party. And it will be right after we gather here. And um, it's going to be fun. We're going to have, again, our traditional contest of ugly sweaters. So let's see who has a brilliant idea this year, because last year it was amazing. You, you're going to win it? Okay. I want to see you. Um, and then, so for the moment so far, I'm going to ask you to bring a um, dish, any, like dessert, and something that goes with pizza. And then if it, if is any one of you who would like to um, just give something for us, like food, cook something for us, let me know. It will be great. Last year, uh, the Hibners did it for us, and it was amazing. That was great. So if somebody has that in their heart again, please do it. And we'll be back until January 6th. We'll be off the 23rd. And December 30th, just, you know, all the festivities and amazing family time and all that. Plus, my baby will be here by that time. So, yes. That punk. I can't wait to pop up. But, yeah. Um, so, yeah, don't forget today, 2, 2.30, Hagerson Ring. It's going to be really fun. And after that, we might say something about doing something else. Maybe ice cream or something. You know, huh? Parents, think about it. It's really good. Yeah. Thank you all. Love you. Have a good week. What language was that? That, that was mine. My that was language. Your own language? Yeah, my own language. Okay. All right. Any other announcements? Anything the Lord showed you that you want to talk, you want to share with us? Anything the Lord did? Make sure I give you opportunity. Oh, hi. Um. I, I think I'd be surprised if um, uh, at least one person or more felt maybe like they weren't getting it or kind of left behind or left out or, or kind of anything along those lines. Um, I just want to encourage you, not only when you're here, but when you're out in the world and you're like, you want, I want to feel more of the Lord and I want to feel... I, you know, I want to sense this and that, and, and you feel like you're not seeing it, and, and that's somehow wrong or whatever, um, to stop and just look. Like, I actually had to do that. I was particularly in some of the more momentous, like, movements, I guess. I was kind of feeling like I'm usually more triggered. I'm usually more stirred up than this, and, like, what's going on? And I, just looked, I stopped, and I just looked, and I was like, oh, that's going on. Um so, um, if, if at any point you feel uh, maybe like you're missing it, just stop and really look and, and 
take everything at face value for what it really is, as opposed to, I, I tend to disqualify things and do things like that. So um, that was something that really helped me and I thought was cool. I just <clears throat> wanted to say something real quick that's been on my heart because we've been sort of talking about healing a lot here the last months or whatever. And, you know, we all have, I know I do in my mind this traditional way of asking someone for prayer, laying on the hands and, and so forth. And I've really been impressed for the last month that in moments of this intense worship, there's actually healing taking place in our bodies. And I've just sensed it so available I mean, he can heal however he heals anytime, anywhere, but I've really felt if you can open yourself up to things being taken care of, like he does it directly, in these moments of worship, I just, I feel renewed in my whole body. Like, and I, I just, I just, this is, I don't know, a teaching thing or something. I just want to make sure people maybe try that out for themselves, so. So, um, in reading through the New Testament, I've been struck by how many times Jesus says the word, if you believe, or if you have faith. And as a child, or even earlier in my life as an adult, when I would read that, I would think that Jesus meant if you've prayed the sinner's prayer then, you know, or if you're saved then. Like the, in my mind, that's how I read it. And I'm seeing how important belief is in the person of Jesus is, like this ongoing interaction of faith between him and me. Um, and so I feel like that was a really important part of our time together this morning. And if faith or belief is something that is lagging, even in my own life, I've learned it's okay to say, Lord, I believe, help with my unbelief, because I know that's there, but that's not the part I want to spend a lot much more time on. I've spent enough time in unbelief. So I, I think I just wanted to share that. If, if belief or faith is something that's lagging in your own heart, let's go after believing and faith in Jesus and taking what we've already experienced of him and letting that fuel us on for bigger and greater and stronger and higher, you know, and together. I think individual is one, and I think together is a whole more beautiful work. So that's my heart. So I have my friend Larry here from Joyland Church, Colorado Springs area. Come on up here. <clears throat> I love this man's heart. I love who he is, how he communicates the, the gospel, the Father's heart, and the kingdom of God. And he's also going to be communicating with his church family here in just a moment. And I told him I thought it would be really cool if our church family in Pennsylvania greeted his church family in Colorado Springs. What do you think about that? Ready to do that? Okay, your timing is like super impeccable. I've been, I've been watching. Have you? <laughs> I thought, wow, this is great. Okay, so um, I'm, I'm not totally infected with the current disease of, uh, you know, having to have my phone while I'm eating dinner with my wife. So I'm not up here to try that, but I am going to be uh, probably a little distracted today. We've had a, a big change in our ministry, and we've invested uh, a lot of energy in being able to reach out. Um, on Zoom and some other educational software. So we downsized our church recently from 16,000 square feet to 3,800 square feet and spent a lot of the energy and money putting in a, a smaller sanctuary that had uh, capability. So my church is getting ready to start in about one minute. And so I'm, uh, I, this is the first time we've experimented with having leadership components doing it remotely. So, um, I'm going to greet them in just a minute, and they're, they're looking at me, and so now I've got to get the camera angle right. But I'm more interested in seeing you guys. So uh, let me make sure I'm unmuted in all areas. Okay. Yeah, there we go. So uh, you guys at Joyland, I'm, I'm joining as a Zoomer. These are our brothers and sisters here at, here at WHO, uh, World Harvest Outreach. We had a great time at the Theology Roundtable. I've been worshiping with these guys this morning, and the Lord has just been magnificent and been pouring out all kinds of cool stuff. Just present. He wants to be with us. He wants to be acknowledged. There you go. <laughs> and so, uh, anyway, I want to bless you guys to start church, and uh, I want you to know that I'm in good hands here. I'm going to um, hang with these guys a little bit, and then I'll come back on about 1030, and um, 
I believe we've got a message. It was neat. We're talking about time, and the Lord's been speaking about time in our last session at the deal. So anyway, one last uh, look at this wonderful family. And uh, All right. Well, God bless you guys. I'm going to stick you back in my pocket now. Okay. Uh, Larry's going to share for about 10, 15 minutes. Uh, I'm going to have the kids that are toddlers, not elementary. So uh, do you have 15 minute, do you have 15 minute attention span? Can you handle that? Okay, good. So all the toddlers can go. Uh, Larry's going to share with us for a short time and then uh, we'll gather all back together. It's all you, buddy. Okay. Thank you. Well, listen, I want to, I want to thank you guys. Uh, Vicki and I came to your uh, Quinnia conference. Was it last year or this year? When, when were we here, Mark? Spring of this year, oh my gosh, and it was wonderful. We both just absolutely walked away feeling as loved as we've ever felt. And, and we've been fortunate to feel loved a lot. <laughs> so it was really, really cool. And then uh, I got the invitation to come back um, to sit in on the theological round table that disrupted your seating patterns. And I, I, Mark asked me to share a little bit of something, and it just, you know, as I'm sure is his habit, just what's on your heart. So... I did feel that freedom. We had a good time at the theology thing, and I just want to thank you for hosting it, and I want to thank you for uh, the energy that was spent for it among your leaders, and you guys, Mark, especially. But I also want to, um, I want to encourage you in, in, the, in the significance of theology. And uh, now the kids that said, no, we have a 15-minute attention span are probably groaning, you know. But, but I, 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 was, I was praying, and I was thinking about what I wanted to share. And a month ago, I had an experience that I'd like to share with you. And there's a lot going on behind this experience, but essentially it, it's about a man, um, a, a, a father to a friend of mine. And he passed away on the 1st of November, so this is a fairly recent thing. And uh, Vicki and I were going to go to the funeral, and we've been friends of the family, and uh, I'd actually pastored the family for a number of years previously. But uh, so anyhow, the funeral was a couple weeks later. So we go to the funeral in this little chapel, and... It was, uh, I don't know how to describe it, and, I, and I'm really uh, not meaning any disrespect, but the, the funeral was from 12 to 15 minutes long. And, uh, yeah, that was weird. That's kind of what we thought when, when it wrapped up. Oh, wow. Uh, now, the gentleman that had passed away was uh, in his 80s. He was like 82 years old, I think, 81 or 82 and he was one of the sweetest, most loving, most perseverant men you could ever know. So just, just telling you a little bit about him. His name is Jim. And uh, he, ha uh, he came from that era where you worked in one place for a long time. And so he was a mortgage banker. And he worked for a bank in Minnesota for, or uh, uh, Detroit, I'm sorry, Detroit for all his whole career. And as a result of that, he had the kind of stability that a lot of times we don't have because we're changing things all the time. So he provided wonderfully for his family. He provided wonderfully for his wife. And, uh, and, and they had moved to Colorado from Detroit and uh, had been established there for a number of years. I never saw Jim without a smile on his face. Not one time. And let me explain the significance of that. I actually did a funeral for one of his children that committed suicide. And you can, so, so I'm, I'm not saying that he was just a, a happy guy that had an easygoing life. Um, his wife, about three years ago, started the early development of a dementia, Alzheimer's, or I'm not really sure exactly what it is. And he cared for her, and I never saw him without a smile. I never saw him without a smile. He, uh, they were Lutherans uh, for a long time, and they were going to a little independent church out in the uh, place called Lake George where they live. And I shouldn't have said that. Okay, anyway, they're going to church out there. You forgot the town. <laughs> but, but so uh, they loved God, loved Jesus, and, and, and they just uh, raised loving children and all this kind of stuff. So there's a lot more I could say, but the point is this. In that 12-minute ser uh, service, the, the, there was a scripture read. Uh, Psalms 23 was read and personalized with, with his name. So uh, though Jim walked through the valley, shadow of death, that kind of thing. 
And then there was a, a little t short homily about that w the pastor chose to use to guarantee and assure everybody in the congregation that Jim had made a decision for Jesus. And there were grandkids sitting there with a hundred stories to tell. And there were kids sitting there and friends sitting there. And I, I, I can't find fault with anything he said. It wasn't like it wasn't true. But it was, I want to give you, because of a couple of these conversations we've had, I want to give you the assurance that this man accepted Jesus. And so, then it was over. And I was stunned. And, I, and people, of course, you know, they travel for funerals. They'd come out. It was, it was freezing cold. Uh, and, and so there were people who were all over the place. And then we went to a, uh, we went down to the graveside, which was about 20 minutes away, that, where, they were gonna be, where Jim was going to be buried. And my wife really didn't even want to go because this really upset her a lot. This, the, the, the brevity and the lack of personalization, personal interaction, and, and the fact that there wasn't room for the grandkids to tell their story. There wasn't room for the friends or family to tell their story. So we spent some time wandering around the room after it was over. We decided to go there, but I said, honey, you've got to get ready. It's going to be short. And it, it, <laughs> it literally took more time to get his wife into a wheelchair across a dirt road in the funeral to the site and a blanket wrapped around her than it took to finish this thing up. All right, so when I see stuff like that in church, and then I contrast it with what we, we experience in, in relationship to, to the Lord and one another in Joyland, or what I obviously, I mean, come on, what I experience when I come to a place like this, it made me mad. It made me mad. But I'm learning that knowing that there's something different is a privilege and being mad about it isn't the best use of the privilege. <laughs> so I started, I, I just started saying, Lord, 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 this, he deserved, my wife's point, Vicky's point was, he deserved more than that. The kids deserve more than that. The family deserved more than that. And, and, and there was certainly no neglect or malice intended, I'm sure, on the part of the ones that organized the funeral. But, uh, so we were driving home and I felt like the Lord spoke to me and he said this, and this is why I want to thank you for hosting a theology roundtable and for having this. So I felt like the Lord spoke and said, Larry, this is the fruit of a transactional theology. And I thought about it for a second, and it began to take shape in my mind. And it sounds like a sterile kind of thing for the Lord to say, but the contrast that I had in my heart, and I felt like the Lord was illustrating, is this is the, this is the fruit of a transactional theology instead of a relational theology. Because, okay, the urgency in the heart of the pastor to make sure that, that God was glorified and that Jim's life was put in the proper perspective was drawn to the, to the most significant thing he understood and believed in because of his theology, which was, have you accepted Jesus? And in those terms, accepting Jesus is a transaction. It's, it's a thing you check off your really important to do if you don't want to go to hell list. <laughs> you know, that's kind of it. And, and actually, that's kind of what Christianity is, is here's a few things you really want to do if you don't want to burn forever. Now, I don't want to get into all that, but I'd like to leave you without a mess to deal with. Uh, but, but whatever, whatever uh, import, and I believe it's eternal, of course, whatever import there is in, in, in where we're going and all this kind of stuff, Christianity is so much more than a transaction to check off the box. And so here's, here's how it played out in real life. The fact that, that, that Jim had demonstrated love to his wife as she declined in, in her cognitive health it, it didn't really measure up as something to talk about. The fact that he had sown life and joy and an 
an irrepressibly happy countenance into a bunch of granddaughters didn't rise to the level of significance because you know to that to the to the transaction and so as as preparation was going on i could just almost envision it in my mind what have i got to let these people know that's really important about jim's life and in doing so so the transaction robs us if we have a transactional theology where we just have a few of those high points the biggest one being do we know jesus it robs us of all the joy that there is in the fact that he knows us in the fact that he has promised to be with us, in the fact that he promises that the Father's going to send the Holy Spirit, and the Holy Spirit's going to be in you and with you forever. And, and so I would say, what's the most defining aspect to anybody's life and character? We were talking a little a bit about it. And there are, there are certain theologies where the beginning of the understanding of the nature of man starts with the fall. But that isn't when men started. And that isn't men's most basic nature. Men started when God said, let us make man in our image. And then the nature of that, that act was one that you guys focus on here. That God predestined us to be adopted as sons. And that we're predestined by his will and love to be uh, adopted and to be conformed to the image of Jesus. And so every person that you look at, if you go back to the most authoritative statement ever made about them, it is that they are very good. That's what God said after he created men. And if you go back to the most authoritative act, and, and I would love, this is why I would love to argue this with anybody that said no. The most authoritative decree, declaration, decision an act about any man is that they are made in the image of God. That's got to be it. And, and if we lose sight of that for the sake of elevating sin, which is, sin is a bummer. Sin is horrible. Sin is bad. Okay? I, I'm not, I don't want you to think I... Yeah, I don't... I'm not, I'm not a friend of sin. But sin does not rise to the level of, of those things. It does not rise to that level. And so I was sitting there thinking about this thing, and I go, okay, so here's a whole camp of brothers and sisters who have been betrayed and denied the joy of the Lord by their theology. And I, it, so then it, I wasn't mad anymore. I was recommitted to, you know, I was recommitted to, to learn how to talk about the goodness of God in a way, to learn how to question and then one little follow-on situation. I have a member of my family who is open to listening to all this kind of stuff. But, uh, <laughs> but every now and then she gets pushed too far and she kind of drives a stake in the ground and has to blurt out some statement to reestablish security within the boundaries of, of God's, you know, there's a limit. God's not only love, he's also wrath. He's not only love, he's also justice, all this stuff. And she made a statement in response to one of my nephews that was talking on Facebook. And she said, um, well, if hell doesn't exist, and, and again, I'm trying to open a can of worms, but she was speaking of the, the whole uh, final destination, burning lake of fire, majority of people in the world are going to go there. If that doesn't exist, then Jesus died for nothing. And I, I saw a replay of the funeral in my mind when I saw that. So... Living to love and care for your wife with an indefatigable joy in your heart counts for nothing. Being reconnected with people that you've been alienated with because Jesus comes in and acts as a mediator between those relationships counts as nothing. Being restored to families that you're broken from counts as nothing. Having hope counts as nothing. And, and so I'm, I'm looking forward to the next holiday we get together. And I'm going <laughs> to... I'm going, to ask, I'm going to ask her, I go, listen, I got a question for you. And I'm not, this isn't combative, and she, we get along great, so it's, it's, it won't be. But I just want to see if you really believe what you said. You really believe, and I'll go through that little list or something like it. Do you really believe that all that counts for nothing? And she'll go, well, no, not really. And, and then we'll have a conversation. And this is what I, what I think we were doing this weekend and why uh, you guys should 
not be afraid of, of uh, theological roundtables or theological discussion because, yes, it can be boring and, yes, it can be rigid, but it doesn't have to be. But eventually, I find that our theology, and all of you have one, because theology is just the way you order your thoughts about God. All of you have one. It'll work itself out, and it'll work itself out in a funeral or in a wedding. It'll work itself out in a conflict with a friend or a family member. It'll work itself out in, a, uh, in an opportunity that, that the Lord brings your way to be reunited to family that you've been alienated from. And I'm kind of preaching to myself now. I've got a sister I need to... <laughs> okay, Lord. But anyway, you see what I'm saying? You see what I'm saying? I have discovered that what we think about God absolutely either narrows or expands how we know God. And so it's work to try to talk about God being good all the time when there's so much evil in the world. It's work to talk about God, about constantly being loved when we are occasionally disappointed. Uh, it's work to talk about the faithfulness of God when we're still waiting for a promise. But it, it, it matters. It matters. And once you settle in your heart that God is a good father and that he loves us and, and, and then just kind of walk through 1 Corinthians 13, not as a work that you're called to discipline your life toward. And I'm not saying it's wrong to look at it that way. But if it's anything, it's more fundamentally a description of who God is because God is love. And so God doesn't seek his own and he rejoices with those and he... He's patient, and it mattered to Jesus that Jim loved his wife well. It mattered to Jesus that he sowed into his grandsons. It mattered that he provided for his family. It mattered that he kept a smile on his face while having to deal with the suicide of his son. It mattered. It does matter. God is with us. We sang it, Emmanuel. That's more important than what we check off in a box. Much more important. So that's just what I wanted to share with you. That's why I love theology. Uh, and I, 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 I used to think theology was apologetics. I don't now. I think theology is digging the foundations of my faith and life deeper and helping other people do the same. So that when the wind come and the rains come, their house still stands. And you guys' house is on solid ground. Thank you, my friend. That's why I love this man. Is that a heart or what? I love it. What does that mean? Kendall's, Kendall's stealing my thunder. Larry, we're going to pray over you. Yeah, so uh, come on back up here. I was going to share a little bit first about something. I love you, Kendall. I love you. I want to share one thing about theology that I think is really important for you guys to realize. After it was over on Friday night, we gathered as about 20 of us or so just talking about the day and a half that we had. And for a lot of us, we don't think of the term theology or doctrine very often, but I want you to know it is vitally important. And the way I see it is like the skeleton of our bodies or the framing of our house. So if you see the skeleton of my body there's probably something wrong. Hello? Yeah, that means either something needs fixed or something broke in a really bad way. But it has to be there to support all of the organs, all of the flesh, all of that which you and I interact with. I don't interact with your skeleton, but if you did not have one, you would be mush on the floor right? So the, the, the theology gives us structure. It gives us firmness. It gives us strength to stand. But how we interact is firmly based upon what's inside holding us up. But I don't interact with your theology. I interact with everything that hangs on it. I interact with your heart. I interact with your eyes. I interact with your physical body. I interact with your soul. And all of that needs the structural arrangement of what you believe about God and people. 
For me, that's the most simple definition of theology. What you believe about God and the resulting beliefs about people, including ourselves. It is vitally important. So we do not say we're preaching theology on a regular basis, but I want you to know in the midst of our interactions, in the midst of our church activities, in the midst of our relationships with each other, theology is at work strengthening, firming, foundationally securing who we are. Amen? That's why it's so important what we did this weekend. So it was a great time of discussion and teaching that I think will go years into the future of who we are and what we're doing. So please stand up here. And as we do, I'd love to have the family gather around him, like physically gather around him. So if you don't want to do it, that's fine. Don't be a jerk. But at the same time, <laughs> there's a theology. Don't be a jerk. Just gather around him. You know, there's there's dads and fathers and pastors in the kingdom that truly embrace their sonship, who they are as a son to the father, and Larry is one of them. So, Father, thank you that though he is senior and has no hair, he will always be a son, that the heart is always bowed, surrendered, in honor of the Father who created him. We bless him today. We speak the abundant life and love that Jesus came to share of the Father. We say we see you, Larry. We see you and we honor you today. We honor you as a gift to us, to Joyland, and to the world. We pray that the sound of the Lord inside of you does not stay local like freedom prophesied today. Because you were a part of this today, we want you to know that your sound goes into all the earth. The son called Larry, who is really a representation of the Jesus on earth, may that sound, may that aroma, may that life reach many, causing hearts to open. We bless you with love. We bless you with life. We bless you with greater vision, greater understanding of the Father's heart. We bless you with encounters and experiences with the Father through the Spirit of who Jesus is in you. May the reality of God become who you are. We bless Joyland Church. We bless who they are and the, and the purpose for their existence. May Colorado shift and open you live in a town called Divide. Father, I thank you for unity in that city because of the love of God in Divide. We thank you for his heart. We thank you for his wife, Vicki. We thank you for all of those who are connected to him. He is important in the earth. And we say yes and amen to who you are. Thank you, Jesus, for who he is. Thank you, Lord. Any strong prophetic unction in the house that you want to share? Thought. Hold on. I want to get you on mic, Jake. Here it comes. Um, one of the strongest things that comes off of you, Larry, is humility. And I think that you're going to... The name of the town was Divide? That's where I live. Yeah. Okay. Um, I get the sense that your humility... This is funny. Um, I get the sense that your humility is going to be world-renowned. Mm -hmm. That your humility is going to open doors. Mm -hmm. And I know that sometimes leadership may not look like humility, but the Lord knows and he sees what humility is. He sees what humility is to downsize your building for his kingdom and his purposes. Mm -hmm. So, Father, in the name of Jesus, so your word is so clear about how you give grace upon grace for the humble. And we thank you for that heritage and who he is. And we bless it and we just speak to the gates and the doors to open up and let this humble man and the kingdom that he brings come through. W would there be things that are maybe locked up in like legislative court or some sort of um, local township thing? Anything like that, Father, right now in the name of Jesus, we just release 
In Jesus' name, Father, let uh, the King of glory come in. Do you remember me from uh, last spring? <laughs> uh, I recall singing uh, John Denver over you. <laughs> um, I don't really know what to say right now, but I just know I needed to come up here and be with you just because of that moment we had together there. And, uh, you know, just encourage you that uh, Rocky Mountain Highway is still true. <laughs> and... Uh, I mean, you have friends and family here. And keep it casual, man. Don't think it needs to be something, you know, thick that you had to fight through. It's, we're here. And he's there. So, uh, I just pray that, Aria, that you, you remember to keep your heart open and that you're Yeah, that you're just so open and friendly, just that you're available and your heart's open. And and I think that you'll find that uh, Colorado's hearts will be open for you as well. Yeah. As you said, Rocky Mountain High, what came to me was those in need, those that are broken, that are seeking drugs for recreational use, that they're going to hear about you, hear about your church, hear about what you're doing, and that there's going to be such an amazing supernatural signs and wonders and healings and miracles and, and it, you know, really the signs and wonders of like a axe that falls in the water and Elisha speaks and it comes up, you know, those kinds of things, not definitely healing even the signs where it's like you can't deny God. The atheists are going to say because of what God's doing in you and through you and around you, they're going to see the supernatural power of God and that these hearts that are crying out, that are seeking rest, that are seeking escape from their life in the drugs are going to come to you because they see rest, they see an escape from the prison that they're being held captive in they're going to find it in you because they're going to find that Rocky Mountain High you, with you because of who you introduce them to and the love and the grace that you walk in. I see, I had a vision um, and I could see like a football stadium, but then I saw the Lord shrink it. And I think it represents what you said about your church. But then I see this big red balloon attached. Like your church is as small as the inlet to this balloon, but the balloon is huge. And I asked the Lord what that meant. And he said, the balloon is going to explode, but you are not shifting things in your immediate area. You are shifting the atmosphere of the earth. It is not just going to affect your immediate area, but it is so huge and so powerful that it will affect the atmosphere of the whole earth, and it will bring some pieces into alignment that the earth has been waiting for. So, as I was praying for you, I'd, <laughs> I kept seeing uh, just that for, for years in the church and everywhere else, we always get the message that, you know, like God breaks through barriers, and we need to break through the barriers as well and all that. And uh, he kept showing me, he was like, with you, it's a different way. With you, it's you're going to walk up to a barrier, and when you're a foot away, it's just going to disappear as if it didn't even exist. Like you're not going to need to break through barriers. You're just going to walk through. It's, they're just gone. Thank you, Lord. <laughs> um, when I heard your town was called Divide, I heard the Great Divide. It's no longer going to be the divide. It's going to be the great divide, and you're going to be known for every all the words that have just been spoken. Mm -hmm. God is setting it apart to do all these awesome things there. And did you say the name of your church was F Joy? Joyland. Yeah, it's that is just perfect. <laughs> uh, there's a there's a thought that you know, like when criticism comes, you know, you have to develop like a thick skin. 
Okay, well, you're an anomaly. You're of a new breed uh, because your skin is actually getting thinner. Uh, and, and, but, but, uh, because, but there's a resilience in you that, that criticism just, it, it kind of like, it just gets absorbed in the love. And it, and it just, it's, it's, it's uh, transferable. Uh, it, it's actually going to, uh, it's going to turn the table <laughs> for a lot of people. Uh, so yeah, so just like, yeah, you're very sensitive, but at the same time, you're extremely resilient and criticism. It's not that you don't take it, you know, into consideration, but it doesn't, you don't let it emotionally affect you to the point that it, it changes, it, it takes you off course. So yeah, we just bless that and all this stuff in you, Larry, we love you. We love you, Larry. Father, thank you today that you are great. Thank you for who you are. Thank you for Larry and what he represents in the kingdom. Thank you for what is happening in our lives here at, at WHO. Father, today I just want to speak a blessing over this house. I want to speak a blessing over Larry. This morning in worship, we were worshiping you. But life was being made manifest in every one of our lives. And may that life go with each of us this week and in the future. That our presence in the world, our presence in our workplace, our presence in our communities we live in, that the, that the very life of Jesus being manifested through each one of us in this family will make a difference in the society we live in. I bless you today with life. I bless you as a household, as a family, that as we go from this place today, we will go forth with anointing, with power, with authority that is from you. And as we go through this Christmas season, may, be a, may it truly be a time of joy and inspiration because of who you are and what you do through each one of us. So be blessed today in who you are as a family of God. Thank you, Lord. Amen. I, uh, I really so appreciate and I receive everything you guys said. I thank you for your prayers. I also am a super people person, so I'd stay around here until the last person was here just talking and hugging. But I'm actually going to head over. Mark's let me use his office, and I'm, I'm going to be teaching my church today out of his office. So uh, if you're still here when I'm done, I will stay around and hug all of you. But don't wait on my account, and I'm not, I'm not trying to just blow out and be rude. All right. Uh, we just had someone pay for two ice skating things. I don't know what you call them, like rentals, entrances, whatever. Someone paid for two. So if there's some youth that said, I'd love to go, but I can't because of money or just people, let you, I want to let you know that Charlie has money for two of you to go without cost. Okay. See him if you want more information. Do you know who Charlie is, right? Yeah. The guy who somehow has the ability to grow an incredible beard and no head hair. Jerk. All right. I love you guys. Have a great week.